Yes, undoubtedly. They they will regret the, the opportunities that presented themselves in the early stages of the game when they had, had control. But uh, gradually, Rangers fought their way into the game. Unfortunately, a mistake by Brian Evan gave them the opening goal. But certainly, the second goal was a magnificent piece of footballing ability. A lovely little dev pass from, from Ian Gerrard. But the timing of the run and the pace and the, and the power that Hatley showed, it, it gave every cost. You know why, why Hatley is a big thorn in their flesh. Well, a first half without any shortage of incident has been tremendous entertainment. And still, these Rangers supporters, in savouring the moment to the full, they seem to believe now that the treble is something of a certainty. I've no doubt in the Aberdeen dressing room, Willie Miller will be doing all he can to change all that. But for the moment, it's jubilation for these Rangers supporters. And they look to be very much in the driving seat in this tenant Scottish Cup final. Half time. It's Rangers 2, Aberdeen 0, with that back to Dougie Donnelly. Yeah, thanks, Jock. All the halftime songs and celebrations among the Rangers fans. Obviously, Ali McCoy nearly broke his other leg leaping in the air when the, the second <laughs> goal went in. You have to feel a little bit for Aberdeen because the first 20 minutes they dominated Ali, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but line, if I said otherwise, I, I was a bit worried if opening 15, 20 minutes. I, th I felt Aberdeen were a more composed team at the start, played some good football. A little bit unlucky in the first, I think, in the first two minutes when Brian Grant hit the post. Sure. Um, but I felt when we get the goal, which was slightly against the run of play, we've taken control then. And from then on in, there's only been one team. And, and the second goal was, was a magnificent goal. It was. Any prospect of the Aberdeen heads going down, Eric? Because that was a real stunner, the second goal, wasn't it? It certainly was, especially coming just before half time. Um, as Ali said, I thought Aberdeen started really, really well. They looked uh, very composed. They created about three or four chances, good chances, before Rangers scored. But since Rangers scored, um, they've gone to pieces, really. Um, well, let's Durant... take a look at that, uh, that early shot that uh, the boys were talking about from Brian Grant, or uh, early header, in fact, which uh, at this stage might well have given... Uh, and it's not the, it was a shot, of course, not a header. And uh, that obviously could have made all the difference, couldn't it, Eric? Yeah. Great hit, great hit. Really early, actually. I think it was only after about the first, what, minute or two, was it? Yeah, uh, right. a minute gone, yeah. A minute gone, and if that one goes in, then it's, it's all changed, isn't it? But, uh, I mean, he met, he met it really well. He hit it perfectly. And I don't think, um, you're probably arguing, but I don't think Andy was saving it had it been in target. No, no I don't That's think right. he was there. I don't think he was getting there. And, and yet, at the other end, Mark Hatley was already beginning to make an impression, and he very nearly set up Ian Durant for a goal, didn't he? He did, but the, he, the wee man for me has been an outstanding player in the first half, because he's, he's playing in that zone, Doogie, but it's very difficult to mark. Aberdeen defend, don't know where the defence to pick him up, or their midfield to drop back and pick up. This is a lovely ball from Stuart McCall. Mark's just peeled away what he does at the back stick there, knocks a great header across, and the wee man had my head on there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Eric, any thoughts on that one? Could, could Ian Gerrard maybe have been expected to do better with that? I don't know. There was a lot of pressure. There was two Aberdeen defenders coming in. And I mean, the ball was kind of waiting up there, you know, for yeah. him. Um, very difficult, very, very difficult. It was a great move, though. I mean, Stuart McCall, yeah, Mark does that very well. He just peels to the back, back post and he's very difficult to mark. Yeah. Stuart played a lovely ball and knew where to find him. That's right. Hatley created the space for yeah. himself, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, but, but Aberdeen were always threatening at this stage in the game, in fact. And uh, I mean, Duncan Shearer was causing a lot of problems at this stage, Eric, wasn't he? Yeah, he had a few chances. There was one particularly that I don't know what they're going to show here, but. Um... You see, the ball has played wide to the fullback. We all expected Duncan Shearer to hit it, actually. It's a good header across. I must admit, I was a little bit worried when Aberdeen got that free kick, because I thought Shearer was going to hit it, because he's got... Yeah, he's he done it last week, actually. He's done the very same thing up at uh, Dingwall and put one straight into the stanchion. Yeah. Um, but, but John Brown, once again, a rock in the centre of that Rangers oh, defence, isn't he? He's, he's, he's soaking up everything that Aberdeen are throwing at him. He's, just, he's immense, the bomber. Um, <laughs> I'd certainly rather have him aside and play against him, put it that way, Dougie. He just uh, epitomises all that's good about the, the modern football. That's right. Duncan Shearer showed some lovely skill, in fact. One, this particular uh, little taking out the, the cross and the volley and sending it wide in the right was a lovely piece of football. Yeah. I think it's coming here. It was magic. I mean, Duncan... It's a fair ball. Yeah, he, he perhaps doesn't get the credit he deserves. I think it just looks on him as an out-and-out -out goal scorer. But he showed some lovely touches here. This is the one that just gets stuck in his yeah. feet, I think he's... Ah, oh, this is a separate incident, in fact. Yeah, he yeah, just, just can't about. get away just from underneath his, his feet yeah. there, and he's standing on it. That was a real bonus for us, actually, because if he crossed the first game, I think it was Boot that was Boot was in, in yeah. yeah. He was just in too early, actually, at the end of yeah. the day. He couldn't get across quick enough. That's right. 
But at this stage, they were getting the Rangers' defence turning and, and definitely causing problems. And I thought getting a lot of space down the flanks, particularly down that right-hand side, Ali. Yeah, I, I felt a little bit, a wee, wee bit worried, a little bit concerned that we weren't closing them down quick enough and they, they were free, getting their crosses in freely without any challenges on them. But um, as I say, since we scored the first goal, we seem to have pay, put pay to that problem for, for the time being. Let's uh, take a look at the, the goal then which broke the deadlock, came almost exactly halfway through the, the first half and obviously an, an element of luck about it, let's just see exactly how the ball ends up in the back of the net here. Stuart McCall involved again. Yeah. I think it's a bad first touch actually by Murray, I'll not be too happy with oh. his first touch there. And his... It's, a, it's amazing actually because first of all Big Brian, um, un unfortunately for Big Brian, he made the mistake here but he missed cues completely and Neil takes a doesn't take a good first touch at all, and then gets the lucky break. But it actually um, comes off his back foot, I think, doesn't it? I mean, it, it has to go down surely as an own goal, Eric. <laughs> I would have thought. Um, Come on, Eric, stick up. For uh, stick well, up for the strikers. I've got to go for the strikers again. Then. Yeah, I'll give it to you, Murray. <laughs> I mean, I would be going. I'd be too happy not to be awarded that one myself. So yeah, I was never winning that argument with two strikers <laughs> sitting beside me. But uh, I don't know if the shot was hitting the target, was it? I don't know, he was certainly hitting the right side of the area. The fact that the, the well, it's going across the goal yeah, as well, which is always goal, dangerous. Which yeah. is, it's the right thing to do. Yeah. And uh, I think it came off Big Brian, unfortunately, and, yeah, and right. it went into the net. I, mean, I wasn't saying that at the time, I must admit. <laughs> but it was against the run of play, but uh, ever since that goal went in, Dougie, we've played some good stuff. That's right. With, as I say, the problem, the problem area being for Aberdeen, the Durant zone, just behind Big Mark and in front of the midfield. I don't think they know what to do quite with, quite with them. Yeah, it's, it's working well for Rangers because Hitley's on his own up front and they're not quite sure whether to go and follow Durant or whether the midfield pick him he's up. He's getting great support from Durant. I mean, he's making the timing of his runs are tremendous when the ball's played up there. To find that when the balls are coming from either fullback, if you, if you watch Durant, he waits to the last minute and it just explodes under the scene somewhere around about Big Hitley. Yeah. And, uh, even if, it's, even if it's not Healy that wins the ball, do you? That's not really an important thing. If it comes off Big Alec, a bad header from right. Big Alec or Brian's as good as a good header. Pieces, that's right. That's great. Sure. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at the, the second goal, in fact, created just as, as Ali says, through that little incursion by Ian Durant. And uh, if there was an element of luck about the first one, this was a beautifully made Super goal. goal. Mark Hitley involved at the beginning the of the pass move. there, as we said before, is unbelievable from Durant. The way it was just magnificent. It's, a th it's actually a three-yard ball. See the wee man away there, he knows he's had a good pass here. <laughs> it's actually a three-yard ball, and it's just amazing. Look, the, the weight of the thing forces Stephen Wright, I mean, it's going to come across him. And to be fair to Theo, he's a little bit unlucky. If it's going to go in, there's only one way it can go in, and it's two th Theo's legs. And um, fortunately for us, it did. Great yeah, determination, like though, from Hertley, tremendous. It was, yeah. it was only one thing in his mind when he got on the end of it there. And he's just so powerful, you know, and yeah. difficult to hold off in a situation like that. Watch. He gets, he gets his body across Stephen right there, and from then on, I think he actually has a real look up to see if he does. He's a quick look into the box here, but <laughs> it's a lovely clean strike, oh, though, isn't it? Great, it's yeah. a great goal. It really is a great goal. Yeah. We've seen him do it before, you know. That's right. So, so are you relaxing now as, as the treble one? No, far from it. No, 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 far from it. I saw another 45 minutes to go yet to get in there. I'm very pleased the way the first half, was the latter stage of the first half, going to get two nothing up in the cup final. I, I didn't expect to be doing it. But it's great, but it's still not 45 to go. And um, the dressing rooms, I'd like to be flying along in both dressing rooms, because it'll be interesting. I'm sure Willie will be getting them going. From an Aberdeen I'll... point of view, though, Derek, what yeah, changes it's... have to be made, if, if any? Well, they, they just seem to be really disorganised after Rangers scored. They seem to be all over the place. Um, it's 2-0 oh, it's down, and it's, it's a big, big, big hill to climb now. But saying that Aberdeen could have been two goals up sure. before Rangers scored, so we well, have Encouragement, I would say, from Wally at half-time. Uh, who knows? Yeah, so, well, these are the incidents on, on which cup finals turn. Uh, the teams, as you can see, coming back out onto the pitch, or Aberdeen anyway. 2-0 uh, down, an awful lot of work to do in this second half. Let's rejoin Billy McNeil and Jock Brown. Thank you, Dougie. Yes, having a very close look here at the Aberdeen players as they emerge again to see if any changes have been made, but there's no sign of any substitute. The goal scorer, first goal scorer, Neil Murray comes out and what an afternoon this is for him the youngest man in the field scoring that vital goal and then Mark Hately who really has been an inspiration up front for Rangers scored the second so Aberdeen now will be looking for a very very fast start to the second half to get back in the match leave it a lot for men like Lee Richardson there in midfield with Brian Grant they have a key role to fulfill and can Aberdeen pull this back it will be a major achievement if they can, telling the champions by two goals to nil. 
And Aberdeen get the second half of this tenant Scottish Cup final away with the very important task of digging in quickly early on, pressurising the Rangers' defence, as they did early in the match. But this time they were looking for some reward. But Rangers, really notoriously effective when they're in front, at tying things up and keeping the lead. Well, they've grown in confidence, and in fairness to him, and Mark Haley's a real threat to Aberdeen, and Gerrard has played well in that in-between role. That he's, he's made life awkward. Both, both he and Mark Haley have made life very awkward for, for Aberdeen at the back, and it's difficult to see Aberdeen come back from a, a, a two-goal deficit. Well, I think they are one of the very few sides who would have any chance of doing that, and their big support will be hoping that they can find some inspiration early on. Mike Trupatalainen preparing another long throw again with Brian Irvin coming into the penalty area. A flat long throw swept away by Ian Ferguson. Ferguson, sometimes a bit of a slow start in the match, but he became much more influential that first half wore on. There's Duncan Shearer, Ferguson again with the header back. We're looking for any tactical alterations, and there have been a couple made by Aberdeen. They've pushed Miksu Patalainen through the middle now in attack beside Duncan Shearer. Scott Booth has withdrawn to a wide left midfield position. And I wonder how long it may be before we see Ian Jess produced from the substitutes bench. Certainly the kind of player with the extra bit of quality which can make all the difference. A bad clearance by Brown. This is Patalina. Shearer waits in the middle. A little bit ambitious that effort from Patalina against the goalkeeper of the quality of Andy Gorham. But Patalainen's had such success with 20 goals this season for Aberdeen and had the chance here to come inside. He had Booth Square, he had Sheeran in the middle. He comes inside him on his favourite left foot, makes a position himself, but never really troubled Andy Gorham at all with that. No sign of Willie Miller on that Aberdeen bench for the moment. He stayed upstairs, but I can't imagine he'll remain there very long. So Booth now in that wide left midfield position for Aberdeen. That's McKimmy. So Scott Booth normally playing on the right flank when he drops back, as he did so effectively in that game at Petodre when he made the winning goal for Duncan Shearer in the league earlier in the month. That's Stephen Wright, beaten by Halstra, Durant. The German play there by Urban. Across goes John Brown, a kind break there off his heel to McCall. There's no offside here, David Robertson breaking. Well, at the moment it looks as though Aberdeen not able to get their foot in the ball in the middle of the field and play these telling passes forward to the front men. And that's because of the snapping attentions of men like Ferguson and McCall in that area. Here's Brian Irvin. Patalainen, Grant playing it wide. An awkward one for McPherson, who he does it well. The header down there by Patalainen. Richardson went in strongly on Murray. This is both. Trying to take on McPherson, maybe that rather obvious. Good play by McPherson. Headed down by McLeish, collected by McKimmy. A call, I think, from Robertson to Brown. Haustra testing the pace of Mason. Good running by Haustra. A good ball inside. This is Durant. He has Haitley in support. Brian Grant did well getting back. The match restarting at a hectic pace. McKimmy, that's a line in his header, no one supporting from midfield, that's another problem for Aberdeen at the moment, getting men into the box from midfield, Richardson and McKimmy having something of a debate in the middle of the field, 
Dolph's header. This is Maria. Unfortunate. Maria again. Mason's interception. That's right. Forced to hurry there again by McCall, right? That's why the error resulted. This is Stuart McKinney. An arm of Grant to Mason. Here's Lee Richardson. Now Grant. Setting himself for the shot. It was blocked by Gorham. And a bit of good fortune there for the Rangers goalkeeper. He had some difficulty with that, but it broke very kindly for him. Duncan Shearer was closing in for the kill. Yeah, again, Grant gets himself in a good position. He comes inside on his right foot. Hits a good shot, but uh, Andy Gorham gets across easily. Parries it, then picks it up quickly. Forward from Grant. Took a knock from Ferguson. This is Stephen Wright. Hauster getting back, committing the foul. Free kick to Aberdeen. Well, here's this chance for Brian Grant. Took up good position there, and Gorham was in some difficulty. It could have broken off to him, to Shearer. Free kick taken by Stephen Wright. That's Patalainen. Lashed away by Robertson. Ranger have no doubt at half time were thinking in terms of holding what they have for 15 minutes or so. Here's Haitley now in the chase. The ball bouncing too high there for him on the run. And allowed the police to get back. That's right. And Patalainen coming short. For the pass, trying to stay on side. Instructions there from the bench from Davy Dodds for Rangers. He's weighed back by Bill Crumby. There's McLeish. Header by Goff was a good one. Richardson, they're trying to control on the instep a very badly spinning ball. Very difficult task. Patalainen challenging. He's with Rangers again. Hauster playing it long. And the cross goes. Irvin, a little bit of uncertainty there. Irvin tells Snell to leave that alone. Hatley's presence again. Causing problems for Aberdeen. Here comes Haustra. That's McKimmy. And now both. Now the little dummy didn't deceive Dave McPherson, who was very quick in the turn there. That's McKimmy. Goff again doing well in the air. Brian Grant. Here's Mason. He has Wright going on the outside. Grant inside. That's good play from Aberdeen. Stephen Wright's cross charged down well by Ferguson. This is Hauster on the counter attack. Careless one though, straight to Richardson. Now it's Rangers time to break from defence with Neil Murray and McCall. Fine play again from McCall. Grant tackled by Shearer. Throw goes to Rangers. Well, Gerrard certainly has caused lots of problems for the Aberdeen defence with his elusive running, his positional play. Brown playing it over the top there for Gerrard. It's followed by McKimmy. Hayley well tackled by Mason, fine play by Paul Mason. Now fouled by McCall. Mark Hayley thought he was fouled first, he's complaining to the referee. Now Willie Miller is on the track, right on the touchline. Gesticulating to his players, wants some movement, some changes. Bill Crombie hovering there, wants to wave him back. 
Well, not a happy man at the moment, the Aberdeen manager. Not a man who accepts defeat lightly or easily. Cross forward by Wright, that's Shearer. This is Brian Grant. Kimmy makes himself available from the left. Shearer back to Richardson. Money to Ferguson, that's fine play by Ferguson. Durant has Hatley over on the left. Well read by Wright. Mason was very quick indeed there, a great ton of pace. Getting the ball ahead of McCall. He goes the cross, Dave McPherson's there, there's Richardson. Oh, a hopeful effort that from Richardson. Had time to control that. And look for a good pass into the box. Hatley again, so hard to mark on the run like that. Well, exchanging a few words with Brian Irvin, who is totally impassive. Goss headed into midfield, this is Ferguson. There's Brown. Mason to Booth, is crossed to the right now. Well tackled by Robertson. Both McLeish and Irvin this time going forward. Aberdeen have to live dangerously now. Here's Miksu Patalainen with his long throw. Hatley was back defending. And defending just as effectively as he's been attacking. Well, this is where Rangers have been successful. They, they have dug in at the back. They had a, an uneasy start to the game. And Aberdeen put a lot of pressure on them. But they've dug in there and they're now making life very difficult for Aberdeen to get any opportunity for a striking goal. Here's McKimmy. At the line ends, return pass. Good running by McKimmy. Tackled well by Goff. Rangers so confident now. They're playing football calmly from defence. In goes Irvin. Hately felt that. Richardson header doesn't reach McLeish first time. There's Richard Goff, Hately still lying in the centre circle, injured. And I think that it may be time to play it out. McLeish does so, in very sporting fashion. So Hately will be allowed some treatment. It was a very hefty tackle he had from Brian Irvin, a fair one though, there was no free kick as Irvin went into that challenge on the Rangers centre forward. But uh, Hately certainly looks to be in some discomfort. Meanwhile, Paul Mason is going to cross to Willie Miller for some instructions. So an earnest discussion going on there. Tactical alterations being contemplated, Mason listening, Miller delivering the instructions. Now Paul Mason is passing on the information. Well, if there's one player, Rangers will not want to lose at this stage, it's Mark Hately. That would be a, a vote to Rangers because he's had a superb match, he's been a threat any time they're in possession, he's a threat in the air, he's a threat on the deck. And he's linked up well with Durant. I think he and Durant have been a great success as a striking partnership. So the substitutes there, Stephen Presley and Gary McSwiggin, but they can take a seat again because Hately is determined to continue. McPherson returns the ball to Aberdeen in sporting fashion after McLeish turning out of play. There's Patalainen, here's Shearer, with both the new and effort. Well, what a try by Scott Booth, the ball never quite settled in a good position for the Aberdeen strikers there. Booth trying to make something out of that. Good climb there by Patalainen, you see the ball bouncing awkwardly and Booth had that brief chance. Patalainen playing it on, Booth tries to keep the ball in play. Just about made that. Trying to keep the ball deep inside the Rangers' half. 
the sixth match of the season between the sides. Four wins to one. Rangers lead by till this afternoon. Turn away by Murray. So just past the quarter of an hour mark, still a two-goal lead to Rangers. Which Aberdeen are trying all they can to change. Bartholainen, in the long throw, McLeish is right on the byline. Urban challenging also, this is McLeish. Back with Bartholainen for the cross. Urban going up. There's Mason, and now Stephen Wright. Playing it early towards McLeish. The back killer from Ferguson was effective enough. There's both Rangers subs warming up seriously now. And Ian Jess also has been ready to leave the bench. A great punch out by Gorham. Superb goalkeeping. And now in the counter attack, Haitley has possession for Rangers. Here's McCall. Durant is inside. Fine play by McKinney, but Bandy Gorham pulled off a tremendous clearance there with that punch under severe pressure. So Ian Jess now out there warming up. I think he will be involved before long. Gary Smith also is preparing for action. Gorham's clearance. Irvin playing it long, both trying to put pressure on Richard Goff. Taking no chances at all. Well, an alteration is going to be made first by Aberdeen involving Gary Smith, who's now on the track, waiting to come on. It looks as though Stephen Wright may be withdrawn. The throw by Petalainen, straight into the danger area, headed away firmly by McPherson. Wright's pass finds Patalainen. Away for the corner, off Ian Ferguson. And there's going to be a change now made by Aberdeen as soon as the referee's attention can be drawn. Stephen Wright is being withdrawn and Gary Smith will come on. The referee has now spotted that proposed change. So there's the... Unlucky man, in terms of selection, Gary Smith. Stephen Wright is withdrawn. And Gary Smith comes on. 22-year-old. See what position he plays in. It may well be he will go into a sweeper role. As Aberdeen push men forward. We'll see about that in a second. But here's Durant for the meantime, breaking for Rangers. Losing out to Mason, fine play by Mason. This is good, McPherson gets there first. Uh, Aberdeen building up some pressure now. If they could cash in at this point, we could be in for a dramatic climax of the match. Mason's ball played in. And Rangers living very dangerously inside their own box there. This is McLeish. And now Richardson, both with a turn. Just a little bit of a hurry there with the final shot, but he certainly had a little bit of an opportunity there to turn on the ball. But you'll see here how dangerous this was for the Rangers' defence. Never convincingly clear, it came off John Brown, then swept away by Goff. It's typical of the way Aberdeen have played, they've put so much into the game, they've created some chances, but in and around 